So I came across this interesting recipe for a cooking spray alternative years ago, so I've been using it ever since, but it just has three main ingredients, a vegetable shortening, flour, and a neutral flavored oil. So sunflower oil is my choice. I used to use olive oil, but I'll explain why I don't do that anymore. So in this particular recipe, and I only make small batches uh, at once and they last a few months, you do a half cup of each. So it's equal portions per ingredient. So we're doing a half a cup of sunflower oil. And you want to stay away from oils that have a distinct flavor like, you know, um, sesame oil or a strong olive oil. Because you don't want to, this is, has nothing to do with flavor. You want it just to be neutral because you're just using it as an undercoating on your pans. So a half a cup of vegetable shortening. Uh, you don't want to use lard, that's based on animal um, fat. So we want this to be shelf stable. So we're going to be using vegetable shortening. And you just want to put that in a half cup measurement and then transfer it to a mixing bowl. And I'm just going to use a hand mixer, but you can do it by hand as well, but a lot easier with a hand mixer. You're going to add your half a cup of just regular plain flour, all-purpose flour. And again, this is just a regular batch that I make that usually lasts about three months. You don't use much when you're using it, so it lasts quite a long time. So you're going to add your half cup of sunflower oil. I used to use uh, olive oil, but uh, it, it, it's not as shelf stable. Sometimes it'll have to uh, be put in a darker jar. That's why you see them in dark green jars. And it has a slight, um, some of them can have a bitter taste to, uh, to them. So sunflower oil or canola oil or something that has a, a longer shelf life and a very neutral flavor is, is kind of my first choice. So I stick with uh, sunflower oil and, and it's been working great. So yeah, just give this a really good mix for a few minutes. You want to blend it until there's absolutely no lumps and it's nice and smooth. So generally on, uh, on medium high for uh, yeah, two to three minutes. It doesn't take long, as long as there's no signs of uh, any leftover dry flour. And then I recommend storing it in a clear container with a sealable lid. The reason I like clear is you can see how much is left and if it's starting to separate, because if you don't use it for a while, a little bit of the oil will separate. There you can see another container I've used, uh, just a glass jar with a, a seal around the lid. So it's important to keep uh, it from air and um, uh, have it exposed to air. So, And once this mixture sits for a, a day or two it starts to firm up a little bit so it's a little bit thicker it's just the air working its way out of it um, from the mixing. But the nice thing is these three ingredients um, kind of make the perfect mix for uh, making it easily spreadable as opposed to you know shortening or lard uh, which is thick and very uh, kind of uh, sticks to your hands. So this is uh, very easy to spread. And there's your mixture. That's the consistency you're looking for. It's about a cup and a half there. Put the lid on. I'm just going to show two examples of uh, how to use it. So I always use a uh, silicone uh, brush. So you can use paper towel as well or another type of brush. But a brush is the easy because it can get into nooks and crannies um, a lot easier than know paper towel or another method so here I'm just applying it to a pizza pan and you don't need a lot maybe you know a quarter of a, a teaspoon just enough to have a decent coating but it pretty much works every time like everything just kind of either pops out of the tins or is easy to uh, to scoop out of a pizza pan this is from a previous video different pizza pan but I did apply it the light coating and it just came right off it never sticks here's an example of a bread pan or a loaf pan it's good because it gets right into the uh, nooks and crannies you don't have to do the old method of you know the lard and, and the coating of flour or parchment paper or anything like that just give it a, a quick coating Now I, I ran out of this mixture. I didn't for so for a while. I was using cooking spray. You might have seen that in previous uh, videos, but uh, and cooking spray I still use. I'll come to that in a minute. But uh, generally, I try to make this every about three months. So here's an example of uh, a loaf. Then it just kind of pops right out, 
and it doesn't leave any residue or flavors on the bottom. That's one reason I like this recipe, is it's very neutral. And like I said, I still use cooking spray. Um, this one, you know, if I'm putting plastic wrap on top of a, a loaf pan uh, for a second rise, then I just uh, spray that right onto the, uh, the saran wrap. So. so just to go over a few points, um, again, you want to use a neutral flavored oil, so sunflower, canola, something that uh, has, doesn't have a strong flavor like sesame oil. You want to keep in a sealable container. You can keep it in your pantry. Um, it's important that you uh, keep it airtight. And store at room temperature. You don't want it any more than, say, 25 to 28 degrees or so. Uh, you can keep it in your fridge if you're concerned that it's going to go bad. But uh, from my experience, I've, you know, I keep it in there all the time and it never, it never goes bad. So it is shelf stable. And if you start to see, I keep it in clear containers because I want to see for one thing how much I have left and I stir it if I see that the mixture is separating sometimes you'll see a little bit of oil on top but you just give it a quick stir with either the brush or a spoon and you can apply with a brush or paper towel on your your surfaces so here you see again the loaf pan now you could even use it on spoons so if you're using something sticky like honey or molasses you can give a, a very light coating of this mixture on the spoon and then your honey and molasses will come right off as well. So that's another use I forgot to mention. And I think if you find that you're using this mixture more often than cooking spray, you'll be buying less cooking spray and this is cheap to make too. So it saves a bit of money, which is always helpful. But yeah, I've, like I said, I've been using this for uh, quite a few years and I've never had an issue with anything sticking. So I encourage you to give it a try. Very easy to make, doesn't take long. Again, you want to use vegetable shortening and not lard. So. so I hope you give this mixture a try. Appreciate you watching. Stay tuned for more videos. Please subscribe and bye for now.